Hi, Sid Dobrin here with Inventive Fishing, and I've been thinking, well, I've been thinking about gas. <laughs> well, to be specific, I've been thinking about marine fuel and the push to increase the ethanol content in gasoline to the highest levels in history. And I have to say, this really bothers me. My first ever job in high school was on a fuel dock at a fairly large marina. And over the years, I heard a lot of people talk about marine fuels, fuel costs, additives, fuel regulations, and environmental concerns about fuel. So all of this recent debate about ethanol really bothers me. I mean, this seriously bothers me for two primary reasons. The first is strictly political in that the new proposals are part of a long-term effort to provide subsidies and incentives to corn producers. The second is tied directly to my love of recreational fishing and boating. But let's get historical. In 2005, Congress approved the Energy Policy Act to help address the country's energy problems through federal loan guarantees and tax incentives. The act increased the amount of biofuel, what we talk about as ethanol, that must be mixed with gasoline. Of course, corporate farmers and corn processors like Archer Daniels Midland Company, Green Plains Renewable Energy, and POET Poet applauded the act as it guaranteed a federally supported need for increased corn growth and processing. In 2007, these and other growers and processors pushed Congress to pass the Energy Independence and Security Act, which gave the EPA the authority to raise the amounts of ethanol and gasoline. Likewise, the 2007 Act provided subsidies for states with low biomass ethanol production to pursue development to increase biofuel production. Since 2007, the EPA has both lowered and raised the required amount of ethanol in U.S. gasoline. And now they have proposed to require an increased amount of ethanol in gasoline. The EPA proposes that refiners blend 17.4 billion gallons of renewable fuels by 2016, and most of this will be corn-based ethanol, though about 3.4 billion gallons will be from other cellulosic ethanols. Interestingly, Congress had proposed that the amount be raised to 22.3 billion gallons, and this past year Congress had recommended an increase to 20.5 billion gallons, but the EPA only approved an increase to 16.3 billion gallons. Now, the EPA defended their increase as being a 9% greater increase than the total 2014 production amount. Of course, industries orbiting the manufacture of ethanol have criticized the increase as being too small, and the oil industry has criticized it as being too much. The EPA defended its decision to adjust the congressional recommendation, noting a decrease in gasoline consumption, a lack of growth in the ethanol producing industry, and consumer dissatisfaction with ethanol blended gasoline. Corn-rich states like Iowa, of course, have berated the EPA's plan. Monty Shaw, the executive director of the Iowa Renewable Fuels Association, said the proposal gave in to big oil lies and turns its back on consumers' fuel choice and the environment. The Obama administration has no legal authority to reduce the ethanol numbers for conventional biofuels, this is a path to nowhere. And the debates between pro and anti-ethanol camps have begun to account for everything from ethanol producers denying corn to the world's hungry and to oil industry's claim of loss of revenue and the ability to operate as oil exporter rather than oil importer. But as an angler and a boating enthusiast, I have to point out that even this decreased increase is detrimental. I'm certainly in favor of the idea of renewable energy, but the ethanol industry has not provided that by any stretch. We now know that in terms of net energy, the manufacture of ethanol burns more than it saves as a fuel additive. 
Thus, from an environmental perspective, ethanol is actually worse than gasoline. And nearly every major news source in the last 10 years has reported on the damage gasohol, the mix of gasoline and ethanol, can cause to your car engines. And of course, if you think ethanol is bad for your car engines, imagine what it's doing to your marine engines. For years, nearly every boat engine manufacturer, the National Marine Manufacturers Association, and the Outdoor Power Equipment Institute have provided substantial data that shows ethanol to cause damage to valves, gaskets, and seals. These groups have also shown how use of greater than 10% ethanol mixes of fuel can legally void manufacturers' warranties on engines, and the newly proposed increase will make finding ethanol 10 mixes all but impossible. So, the new proposal from the EPA will up the percentage mix to 15% ethanol, or what's known as E15. Your boat engine was designed to account for E10, but not E15. Now, fortunately, the law requires that the EPA take public comments about the proposed increase until July 27th. And so I'm asking you that you join me in letting the EPA know that as consumers and boaters and anglers, we do not want E15. The National Marine Manufacturers Boating United program has made it easy to add your voice to the millions of us opposing E15. Just go to this website, right there, you see it, and follow the directions to let Congress and the EPA know that you oppose the move to E15 fuels. Fish on. Can't.